into Real Shame, a show where us two guys talk to you about movies that we have not seen. And uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, that's, that's what we do. Stuff, stuff from our list, movies that uh, have passed us by for one reason or another. My name is Andy. And I'm Adam. And this week we're going to do a couple of movies that, uh, well, one I have seen before, but the one that we're doing today I have not seen. And it is uh, all about Mr. Ray Charles, but we'll get into that first. We like to start off on Monday's episode by talking about what we have been watching lately. And I think we've got some shared commonality. We do. And what we've been watching, but you go first. All right. What have you been watching? So watched one movie I was really excited about and one movie I, I didn't really care that much about. But uh, <laughs> I, think I, I think I know which one, which one is which. And uh, so the, I'll start with the, the latter is uh, we watched A Quiet Place 2, right? Mm-hmm. I thought it was okay. Like, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't, you know, I watched A Quiet Place, the original, a couple months ago. And I even think I said it on the podcast mm-hmm. or on the show. So I wasn't into the hype. I didn't watch it when it came out and stuff like that. And I, so it, it, I don't think it affected me the same way it affected a lot of people. Like, it just, because it, it wasn't as new as invigorating, I guess, mm-hmm. when it came out or when I ended up watching it versus when it came out and all that kind of stuff. So I, I wanted to watch it because you know I was curious about a Quiet Place too and wanted to see it. So I watched Quiet Place too and I thought it was okay. Like the 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 stuff with the where the kid spins off and goes on his own adventure and some of the cutting back and forth. Not my favorite, but I don't know. Where do you where do you sit on the Quiet Place too? I like them both. Um, I saw the first one in the theater and I thought it was well done. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I rewatched it right before we watched yeah. part two, but I, I, I feel like they're both about the same, um, as far as like quality. I, yeah, I think, yeah. I think they're both good. Um, I, I'll be interested to see what they do for the, the third movie. Cause you know, yeah. there's, there's going to be a third movie. There's, if they back up that money truck. Oh, I'm, yeah. I just feel like there's going to be, it's going to be at least a trilogy. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that a quiet place needed a sequel, but I think that they did a pretty good job with the sequel. Yeah, it they, went, it went in some directions that I didn't know that it was going to go in necessarily uh, based on the preview. So yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it for the most part. I mean, neither one of these films is without flaws, but I yeah. feel like they're both pretty entertaining. So hopefully it, the third one will be just as good. It just seems like both of them are about the kids making very stupid mistakes and errors <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I, I agree with you on that part. Like, stupid I don't think kids. it's, I don't think it's bad, but it's definitely could have been a lot worse if somebody else kind of bumbled their way through and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I watched was a movie I was really excited about. This one's based on a Disney theme park war ride. And it's not Pirates of the Caribbean because we talked about that a second ago. It's not Haunted Man- Mansion because I haven't seen that. The one with Eddie Murphy. Have you seen that one? I don't think I, uh, I, don't think I have. No, it's Jungle Cruise starring The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and Emily Blunt. And uh, I was really, really excited to see this because I really like those kind of movies, those action-adventure kind of movies. And this movie is kind of a letdown to me. <laughs> Uh, I agree. I just don't think The Rock is as charismatic as he needs to be. Yeah. And it, like, he's a charismatic person, but just in this movie, just, he seems like he's the wrong person. And he, he just, he doesn't, he can't play, like, that Brendan, like, the role that Brendan Fraser did so well in The Mummy. You know, that kind of, like, suave, but kind of, like, with a little bit of edge to him kind of character. He's like... That's just not the the rock these days, you know. He, yeah. He's he's he, he's so much larger in life that I think it's he fits better into like the movies like Hercules and Skyscraper, where he has to play like a big bulking massive kind of guy, and like in this kind of movie, it's just it's just he just doesn't fit right for me. And I think they could have done more to make the story a little bit better and make like Edgar Ramirez's character like. Uh, like more of like a, a threat during the thing because it just seems like he kind of comes in mm-hmm. a little bit at the end and it's just like I think I think a lot of people say it borrows a lot from Pirates of the Caribbean and it does, oh, yeah, it does. but it's not borrowing the right enough of it yeah. right they need to go back to Pirates of the Caribbean and look at <laughs> where Barbosa is in that and and make those things better. So. And, the, and they're weird, as you called it, Trans Siberian Orchestra. Oh yeah, I was version gonna, of yeah. nothing else matters. It's just bizarre and yeah, out yeah, of place. Yeah. yeah, I I I I think that is so. T- it doesn't fit the tone of the movie. No. And uh, it's weird. I, it's it, it, at that point, 
I think we looked at each other. And we're like, oh, no. yeah. When, what do we have for? When it came on, we were both like, is this Metallica? Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what is that? You know, I mean, a, a bad song is not going to ruin a movie. There's plenty of other things wrong with this movie, but that was one of them. It just shows you like that. Like, I don't want to say the director's incompetent because that's mean, but it just shows you like maybe he's not. He doesn't get what he's what he's trying to put on the screen, right? It just feels yeah. like, like if you're making those kind of musical choices, then then there's something wrong with with the tone. So I was super super disappointed by the Jungle Cruise. So that's what I've been watching. I'm pretty sure it exactly overlaps <laughs> what you've been watching, yeah. and you've been sprinkling in your your own pieces. But feel yeah. free to add any more to it that you no, like. No, I I think you summed it up, especially yeah. Jungle Cruise. I, I feel the same way as you do about Jungle. Cruise. I mean, I wasn't looking forward to it. I don't think as much as you were, but either way, I think we were both pretty let down yeah. by it. And I think Emily Blunt does a great job. She just needed somebody different. As yeah. the as the guy to go against me, like a Chris Pine would have been, I think, pretty good. Like him as his ca- as Captain Kirk a little bit with that kind of edge would have been better. Um, just yeah. not the Rock. Yeah, it's it's to me it's strange. Uh, and I was talking to somebody about this last night. It's strange. The the Rock is like a love interest kind of thing or romantic. It's just weird. Yeah. Like in Hobbs and Shaw, he's he he kind of has a little attraction to Shaw's brother. Uh, and they share like a quick kiss when they go back to Samoa. The Rock. Yeah. And Shaw's yeah. brother. Uh, sorry, Shaw's sister. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was like, I was like, I was like did we watch the same Hobbs and Shaw. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, Shaw's <laughs> sister. I was thinking Shaw, Owen, and Deckard, the brothers. That's uh, I said Vanessa brother. Kirby's sorry. character. Vanessa Kirby's character. I'm yeah. sorry. Really? Let me rewind. Yeah, uh, yeah he has kids with. That would be funny though. Yeah, he had a kiss be, be. with uh, Jason Statham's brother. What's the guy's name? Luke. Uh, Luke Evans. Yeah, Luke Evans. Sherry Tesla screen. That'd be yeah. awesome. Or Ellen Mirren. That'd be and awesome. Vanessa Kirby have a, a quick kiss in Hobbs and Shaw, but it's really nothing more than that. You yeah. know, it's just kind of like, uh, which is probably good because I mean it's just weird, and and I think the the chemistry bet- between him and Emily Blunt isn't really isn't really there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's fine, and she's fine in both of these films. A Jungle Cruise and, and Quiet Place Two. And I think Quiet Place One for that. I minute, think but. she. I think she, this movie kind of does her a disservice because I think she could be really great. Yeah. If she had someone, I I wish they would remake this. Uh, or remake the Haunted Mansion maybe. I, I think this one's doing gangbusters. But yeah, I, I yeah I'm with you though. I'm, last thing I'm gonna say on this is I have trouble seeing Rome the Rock as a romantic interest mm, yeah. in any movie. I don't know what that is about it. But I guess I like I couldn't see Arnold Schwarzenegger as a romantic interest either. So maybe it's. Right, just the, I think it's the same it's, thing. I think it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah, it's just you want to see these guys throwing good dudes across the room. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to see them like making out. Yeah. You don't want right. to see Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito kissing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> All right. All right. That's what we've been watching. Okay, <laughs> let's get. <laughs> Those are okay. Let's get into our feature review, um, and we're gonna go into the early two thousands and talk about a movie that Andy hasn't seen oh. called Ray. Jamie Foxx uh, stars in his musical biopic about the life and career of the legendary rhythm and blues musician from his beginnings in Georgia uh, to his stardom, and that is Ray. Sir. Boy, are you blind? Yes, sir, since I was seven. (laughs) Well, let me help you out then. This is a country band. We don't play no boogie woogie. Yes, I understand. I love country music. All right. Go on. Tell me, what is it you love about country music? I, I love the stories. You know, about falling in love and having love knock you around, and then the pressures of the world on you so tough, it makes you feel small. You want to give the soul to God. You might as well. Your ass belongs to him. Boy, you sure you blind? Last time I checked. came out in 2004 it is written by taylor hackford and james l white is also directed by taylor hackford uh taylor hackford just directed a whole bunch of movies before ray and stuff like that uh it's a movie i saw when it came out pretty close to when it came out 
Uh, I, I think this is when I, around the time I was really focusing and paying attention to movies and caring about movies that get nominated for Academy Awards and all that kind of stuff. Um, but a movie that you haven't seen, which is really odd because it did get nominated for Best Picture, right? And you usually see movies that are nominated for Best Maybe. Picture. I can't remember if it did or not. I yeah. think it did. Uh, it had four nominations. So it's your week. I'm putting you under spotlight. Uh, what did you think about, what did you know about Ray going into it? And what did you think about Ray uh, after watching it? I've never heard of Ray Charles in my life. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean, I, so I don't, I, I'm not a Ray Charles. I, I mean, not that I'm not a fan. I, I, I have no real opinion of Ray Charles. Yeah. So I don't really listen to Ray Charles music. I mean, I remember Ray Charles. Of course, I know Georgia on my mind and stuff like that. But I remember Ray Charles more for like commercials and stuff that yeah. he did. Like I think he did like a Pepsi commercial I back think in the he day. Did. It was really famous. Stuff for that. like that. So and, and I think by the time I was like old enough to kind of know Ray Charles, he was more of uh, I don't want to say a caricature, but you know you you know just kind of what you think of yeah, yeah. when you think of Ray Charles. And, and maybe for me that was like Ray Charles as Pitchman, like a commercial guy or whatever. Uh, and and Georgia on my mind, but. I never really listened to his stuff. So when the movie came out, it's not that I didn't really want to see it, uh, but I just thought, well, I don't really listen to this guy's music. I don't really know that much about him. Yeah. Um, you know, so I just, it just passed me by. Uh, but I, you know, I, I had friends that went and saw it back then and they all said it was good and they all thought Jamie Foxx was great. And whenever he won the Academy Award, yeah, you did. Spoiler, you know. No, it's fine. Uh, no, I know. Uh, but uh, whenever he won at the Academy Awards, you know, they were like, "Oh yeah, deservedly so," and, and whatnot. And again, I mean, I, I just never got around to watching it until now. Until um, I made you do it. I uh, browbeat you, brow you into you it. You browbeat me into watching it. No, uh, I mean, again, it, it's one of those movies that I'd always meant to see, but I just never got around to it. And I probably every time I was getting around to watching it, I was like, "Oh, two and a half hours." <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I don't know about that, but um, I finally sat down and watched it, and I thought overall it was pretty good, actually. Um, like you said, Taylor Hackford is no stranger to mo directing motion pictures. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at his filmography, and he's done some stuff that, that I liked, like Blood In, Blood Out, which is like three <laughs> hours. That's really long. He likes all his long movies, I guess. Yeah, uh, but I, I like this movie overall. Uh, I mean, there's definitely parts of it that I did not like. Um, I you know, when you have like biopics, when you have like biopics, when you have biopics, not like biopics, when you have biopics um, about yeah, somebody's life, it's always like, does it have their blessing? Is it going to show them warts and all? Is it going to exclude this? Is it going to exclude yeah. that? I knew that he was a drug user. So I was wondering how much of that kind of that they would show. I didn't know that he was, the, you know, the womanizer that he yeah, was, yeah, but yeah. apparently he uh, <laughs> couldn't keep in his pants. Uh, but... Uh, so that I mean I I think it was good that they kind of they, it was worse than all and yeah. and apparently it had his blessing yeah uh, he he didn't really object to I think he objected to like one thing about the movie yeah like, I read that he they, was still alive when I read they that they it. printed it out in Braille so he could read it the yeah. script and stuff like that and he only had like one objection to one scene I think I think the thing he objected to correct me if I'm wrong or I don't know if you read this or not but uh, he did not introduce the Regina King character to drugs she did that on her own. Mm. I think that was originally how it was going to be. But in the movie, it, he doesn't. He's like, don't use this yeah. stuff. Uh, but apparently she got hooked on drugs as well. But I, I thought overall it was good. The All the stuff dealing with his mother, I thought was uh, pretty heavy-handed and melodramatic. And when his brother died, it was super, super melodramatic. <laughs> super, super melodramatic. Uh, I didn't like any of that stuff. Um, so I, I, it's not that I didn't want to see him growing up. I, I just yeah. wish that they, I wish the movie would have started with him as a child. And kind of went through him going blind, uh, him learning to play the piano because he goes in there and the you guy kind of like shows him how more linear than they, they kept on the book. Yeah, of they didn't need well. to do the flashbacks. The flashbacks didn't need to be as melodramatic as they yeah. were. Uh, and I wish that they would have showed whenever he goes off to the school because I think that's kind of where he honed his piano prowess. At least reading about it afterwards, yeah. they don't show any of that. He just no. goes to school. Yeah, he's just like his mom just it's, ditches yeah. him basically. Uh, you know, get on the bus school, and yeah. there's a little sign around your neck or whatever. But uh, and and when he learns to play the piano from the old guy in the like cafe or whatever, I wish they kind of would have expanded more on yeah. that. I mean, at two and a half hours, they go through a lot of of Ray Charles's life, and and I don't feel like that, you know that they left a lot out. I mean, I feel like for the most part, you get a pretty good sense of who this guy was. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, his drug use and his struggles with that, his struggles with, you know, being faithful to his wife and everything else. I thought overall, and I thought Jamie Foxx was really great. I yeah. mean, he, he lived and breathed Ray Charles. I thought he was uh, excellent. So I think his, 
I do think, like my friends thought back in the time, back in the day, that uh, his Academy Award win was was definitely justified. But uh, this is a movie that you had seen before, as you said. I did. So, so, what did you think about it before? I remember liking it before. I remember thinking it was pretty good. This time around, I, I really didn't care for this movie at all. <laughs> okay. Um, I wrote in my notes, is this a bad movie? It's just... <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's just Personally. the pace of the movie is just so accelerated. It just feels like it's always cutting. And like you said, the flashbacks being really metal, melodramatic, being like super saturated in the colors and all that kind of stuff. It just felt like... It just felt really funny to me and just more... Like it just felt like it was more of a send up of biopics than it than it, than an actual biopic, right? Yeah. Or because uh, it just felt it just felt like it didn't feel sincere. It just felt just really, really, really just kind of like jumbled and sped up and put together really, really, really uh, in that way. Um, so I I really did not care to watch it or did not care to watch it. I really didn't enjoy watching it this time around. I do agree with you. I think Jamie Fox is a standout and. Yeah. He and you know about a couple minutes in the movie, he kind of disappears as Jamie Fox and he reappears as Ray Charles. Like it's really hard to see him. Like when I'm watching the movie, I don't, I'm not thinking, "Oh, that's Jamie Fox." I'm yeah. like, "Oh no, this is actually Ray Charles." Like he, the way he inhabits that character, and you know, it's it's and I think we'll kind of talk about this maybe a little bit on Wednesday, is that you know it's you when you're an actor, it seems like. And the and the the character that you're playing is it's it has a lot of like mannerisms and the way he kind of acts. It's it, you really want to grab all those and really accentuate all that kind of stuff. And it's really hard to kind of pull it back and make it kind of feel real and stuff. And you know the, the stuff that Jamie Fox does with the mannerisms and the way he kind of moves and the way he kind of like holds himself, you you, you can, that could easily fall into parody. And it's amazing that it does not. Yeah. You know, in here, so I, I it, it is it is amazing. And he like he learned how to. I mean, he he was a musician beforehand, but he really you know upped his game, upped his chops on a lot of that stuff, and was playing the piano for real and all that kind of stuff, which is admirable, right? Yeah. But like I said, I think him withstand you know not you know him withstanding. I don't know if that works that way. You know, excluding Jamie Foxx, just the movie just didn't do a whole lot for me this time around. Uh, like I said, I just wasn't. I, I I think exactly what you said about you know the flashbacks were too much too melodramatic. We didn't nothing interesting was really there was some interesting stuff, but it, there they didn't find the, the 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 meat of the the story. I think would have been a better kind of story to tell, right? Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, even at two and a half hours, I, I didn't really think that because you know how do you condense a person's life yeah. into any amount of time really i mean somebody especially somebody that lived as long as he did so i you know i wouldn't say that it i didn't think it was too long necessarily but obviously if you cut out all these flashbacks and like you said make it more yeah. linear you probably would be a, a bit shorter also all that stuff with where he would see water or stuff would be yeah. soaked in water i i don't need all that stuff and you know? i know, and maybe someone who's a bigger fan of ray charles could tell us why that's the case like was that something that was haunting him his whole life where yeah. he just kept on because i because i was reading on wikipedia that that even like the way his brother died wasn't it wasn't accurate yeah well what i read was he did try and get his brother out of the tub yeah. the little the little wash basin thing not tub um and he couldn't and so he ran back inside and by that point it was mm. too late but uh yeah it, i mean I, it's supposed to mean that he's he's kind of haunted by that but yeah, yeah. i it just it just didn't work for yeah me, i agree 100 agree he really didn't so that's kind of where I, I I stand on it. So I wish I enjoyed it as much as I remember enjoying it. Watch, man, my nose is really itching today, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I wish I enjoyed it as much as I remember enjoying it, but you know it didn't really sit that well with me uh, this time around. Uh, as far as the rest of the cast, uh, you know Regina King's great. Uh, I love seeing Lorenz Tate. I, I yeah. like him. He plays a young Quincy Jones. He's not in the movie a whole lot, but he is in it. Uh, Bokeem Woodbine. Bokeem, both, I love Bokeem. Yeah, I know. Who who doesn't love Bokeem Woodbine? And I love that his character's name is Fathead. Fathead. That's I think uh, I really like what Clifton Powell brought to Jeff Brown's character, mm -hmm. especially yes, the part at really the especially the part in the end where when he gets kind of usurped by uh, was it Harry Lennox, Henry Lennox's character Joe Adams, mm -hmm. like that is like oh that I like I felt that a little bit that yeah. that that yeah that blow they, or they, that they, they've been friends a long time yeah and he was like and he helped him a lot yeah. as much as. As much as Ray tried to be, you know, independent and stuff, there was a lot of stuff that he couldn't do very well, and especially around like finances and stuff. 
they give him a twenty or a one dollar bill, he can't tell the difference between the two, right? Right. So he it seemed like Joe stepped up or not Joe Jeff stepped up and helped him out with that. But you know, I guess in the movie you find out that he might have been skimming a little bit at some point. Yeah. Sadly. But um, yeah, I think everyone did well. I think you know, Kerry Washington was great, and you know, Regina King was great. So. Yeah, and and Kerry Washington has kind of a thankless role. Just yeah. it's, it seems like his his wife in real life kind of kind of yeah. had a thankless role, having to stay at home and while he ran around on the road and and ran around on her. Yeah. Uh, the part where he I, I wrote down or the part where he creates the hit the road jack with Regina King to me that was comical sounding like because all of a sudden they just start burst, <laughs> bur- they just yeah. burst into song. I was like, is this turning into a musical? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what's going on? Well, here? I think I thought, this I movie is considered silly. like a musical. Well, yeah, but but you don't have characters like yeah. walking into a room and they start singing. You yeah, know, they're yeah. they're recording songs, so that's cool. Uh, when he's recording the the mess around song, maybe think of planes, trains, and automobiles because that's what <laughs> John Candy's jamming to when they're driving down the road and they get into all those hijinks. So that's always good. Good so times. I have on here that it was nominated for four uh, Academy Awards on the seventy seventh Academy Awards. Actually, originally the IMDb said two, but I was reading the. Wikipedia and there was four listed, so I don't know why, what the difference is on that. Uh, Jamie Foxx won for Best Actor. Uh, he also won uh, Best. He won at the Golden Globes, the BAFTA, the Screen Actors Guild, and the Critics Choice, and he was, became the second actor to win all five of those major lead actor awards for the same performance. And uh, the only one who won the Golden Globe in a, the musical or comedy category versus the drama category. So that is some. Um, that's so actually some, I think it's like we said, it's really well deserved and it's, yeah, really, it's really interesting. He's very good. So we, we they kind of know where we fall on it. Where does the critics fall on this movie? Before that, oh, yeah, uh, I was just going to say he was nominated for Best Actor for Ray. He was nominated for Best Supporting Actor for Collateral that same really? year. Yeah. yeah. So he was going to win one of the two. And <laughs> obviously he won the one for Ray. Um, but uh, Collateral is good too. I like collateral. Uh, it's seventy nine percent fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and with an eighty seven percent audience score. Roger Ebert really enjoyed this movie. He gave it thumbs up and he gave it four stars in his wow. print review. And Leonard Malton gives it three stars. So what did you I'm decide more to pair? You're more Malton, yeah, yeah. I think I am too. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a four star movie to me. What, what did you decide to pair with old Ray Charles? Ray? That, that's a good question. I was trying to find, you know, I wanted to do another music biopic, and there's been a lot uh, that's happened before this movie and there's been a lot that happened kind of after this movie and I, I kind of wanted to keep it musician focused and I wanted to keep it like with pianists and stuff like that and I came across another movie that has a actor that won an Academy Award for their performance as a music as a, a musician in a musical biopic and that movie is Shine it's a movie you've seen before right mm-hmm. it's a movie I've never seen so I'm interested to dig into that but uh, so that's what I decided to pair it with is, is was it 1994 Shine? I think 1996. 1996 is Shine. So stay tuned Wednesday and we'll talk about that. All right, guys, that's it. That's the end of our show. If you've seen Ray, let us know what you think about it. Maybe you're more in Andy's camp and you really in, you enjoy it, or maybe you're more in my camp and you think it's kind of cheesy and clumsily edited together <laughs> or not. Uh, maybe it's melodramatic. You know, you got to let us know. Leave a comment down below if you're watching us on YouTube or shoot us an email if you're listening to us. Our email address is realshame at gmail.com. That's R E E L shame at gmail.com. You can also send us viewer questions to that email address. Uh, we answer those on our Wednesday episodes, so those would be great to be sent to us. And we're on social media at Real Shame on Instagram. Like, subscribe, share the show with your friends, frenemies, everyone. Because that really does help, and we really do appreciate that. And stay tuned Wednesday as we see whether or not we have a shine to shine. I don't know if that works. See you soon, guys. Bye.